Joining us now over Zoom is the voice of the Utah State Aggies, uh, one of our good friends, Scott Gerard. Got a G. A fantastic job, radio personality in Salt Lake City for KSL Sports Zone. Scotty G, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It's always a pleasure to catch up with two of my favorite people on the planet. Hey, before we get started, I have a quick story. Can I share you a quick story? Yeah, with please. Really quick? Yeah. So uh, I grew up in the middle of nowhere, Idaho, a little town called Declo. And about two or three months ago, I get a DM from my high school principal. And I have not talked to this guy in like 25 years. And he reaches out and he goes, hey, just want to let you know, really proud of the work you're doing. It's really awesome. I'm thinking, oh, that's cool. He's like, listens to the show with me in hands, or he's listening to play-by-play. He's like, whenever I see you pop up on a great show like BYU Sports Nation, I know you're doing good work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, to Mike Matthews up there in Declo, Idaho. Let's, Deck low. Low. let's talk some cool Yes. Hey, sorry, sorry that it wasn't exactly what you wanted. <laughs> but shout out to Mike. That is fantastic. <laughs> uh, you bring up Hans. So, what? Let's just throw some heat out early on in this conversation and keep it rolling. Okay. Is it is it harder to work with Hans Olsen or Ben Bagley, Scott? Uh, both had strengths. Um, both uh, had different challenges that you had to work through. Uh, ben certainly uber focused. Hands has the attention span of a hummingbird, and so you kind of have, <laughs> have to corral him a little bit. Um, there was a great story though when we were there was a Utah State BYU game. It was the really cold game oh, yeah. day after Thanksgiving. What was that 15? 17, 18? And uh, and we're standing there, and Ben was not as um, svelte as he is now, and. Uh, and and um, there was a play that uh, I, I can't remember the running back came out of bounds and hands moves Ben over in front and uses Ben as like a human <laughs> shield um, as the play was going out of bounds and frankly probably protected all of us but I'm afraid Ben took the brunt of that uh, of, of that hit so yeah hands is. Hans is a great dude, but Hans will sacrifice friends and family to make sure he stays safe. <laughs> yes. Hey, at the end of the day, that's the character revealed there for a sec. Uh, okay, yeah. let's talk Utah State football. Certainly, this is a team that won the Mountain West, finished top 25. It was a banner year. That was a big win for BYU to get that done in Logan last year. Now Utah State comes in reeling at 1-3 and three and having lost to Weber State and UNLV. What changed with this team? You know, it's interesting because you think, okay, the coaching staff comes back, quarterback comes back, and everything should just be lock and step and ready to go. And there's been struggles in terms of losing key players. A guy like Devin Tompkins, who led the nation for a good chunk of the year last year in receptions and receiving yards, uh, he leaves. They lose their top three receivers. They leave their top tight end. A guy on the defensive side like Nick Henniger, uh, Justin Rice, those were all huge key losses. Uh, the thing that surprised me the most, though, is the receivers they brought in via the program or the transfer portal, I kind of felt like would be able to transition nicely into this offense. And that has not been the case. This offense has been, uh, has really struggled. And I think the knee injury to Logan uh, Bonner, who suffered an ACL tear in the uh, bowl game, he's come back and he's tried to fight through it, but he's not quite there. The, just does, the timing's not there. The receivers haven't quite figured out this offense and it just hasn't clicked and it feels like every week it's like okay this is the week it might break out and it, and it, you saw a little bit of it against UNLV who's a much improved team uh, but that's still a team that Utah State probably should be beating and not losing by 10 at home to UNLV so there's a lot of things that I think people are concerned about for good reason I think we eventually feel like it's gonna rectify itself but it certainly isn't quite there yet Scott, with the struggles of Logan Bonner, and uh, yeah, tough to come back from an ACL. Oh my gosh. And you said he's just not himself. At what point does it become Cooper Lega time? Cooper Lega, of course, a great Orem high product, and uh, it was a big get for Utah State. Is it this week? If not, is it in the near future that Cooper Lega takes over and plays some quarterback? Well, there was a lot of conversation before that UNLV game, and Blake Anderson said that Logan would be on a short leash. Uh, he did go out and throw five interceptions. Two of them were, end, one was end of half, one was end of game. So you kind of take a look at that um, and, and kind of, you know, brush that aside a bit. Uh, coach said two of them were on Logan Bonner. Um, but there wasn't a moment where it really felt like, okay, the reason BYU, or Utah State struggling in this game is because of Logan Bonner. Uh, I do think they'll try to stick with him as long as they can, barring another injury that, you know, who knows, it may pop up somewhere along the line. I think they'll try to stick with Logan as long as they can. But if 
if you see that offense continue to stall and you look at it with because of bad reads or because of bad uh, decisions out there on the field, then yeah, he'll go to Cooper Lega, and it wouldn't surprise me if Cooper gets the shot here uh, in the uh, near future. They roll both of them out to this huddle after a kickoff, and then they run to the sideline. Are you looking for who the quarterback is every offensive series start now? Uh, certainly was that way against UNLV. Yeah, you know, I got the binoculars there in the booth, and because you'll see you'll see Cooper warming up on the sideline, thinking, "Oh, oh, here's going to be the it's going to be his drive." There was a moment in that first half where Logan Bonner threw back-to-back -back interceptions, and and you're thinking, "Okay, this might be the time they they make the they make the pull," and they put Logan out there, and Logan takes it right down the field and scores a touchdown uh, right before the end of the half, and and it probably saved. Uh, or at least earn him the right to finish that game. Now, going into the BYU game, that's going to be another, you know, I'm sure that they'll try to give Logan every opportunity. But make no mistake, if there's any other issues uh, and any issues we're not aware of at this time, uh, that, that Cooper will get a shot. Scott Gerard, the voice of the Utah State Aggies, is on BYU Sports Nation. We so often hear, hey, throw out the records, all of the story. This is a rivalry game. It's just about pure emotion. Are you buying into that this week, given the struggles of Utah State? Maybe they rally the troops. Maybe they come into Provo and they do something special. Like, does it, does it matter what Utah State has done to this point when it comes to the rivalry game and the last one for the foreseeable future against BYU? I think there's a lot of emotion, sure. And you look, these guys, a lot of these guys played on the same high school team, played against each other in high school. Some, some of them are even related to each other. So, yeah, that's going to matter. But at the end of the day, talent usually wins out. And Utah State is a talented football team. It's not clicking yet, but if Utah State makes this game close or, or, or wins this game, it's because Utah State played really well and they've got some talent on that team. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm a little, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm a little cynical on the whole emotions play out. Look, Utah State, for a lot of years, always wanted to beat BYU, and more often than not, BYU beat Utah State because BYU, more often than not, was the more talented team. And I think you can want to play as badly as you want, but at the end of the day, usually the better team finds a way to win that game. And so Utah State certainly has a, 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 a tough hill to climb against a really talented, really special BYU team that's playing great football. And so if Utah, but Utah State's talented. They've got good players on that team. Uh, they've got a defense that's you know, ranked seventh in the country and tackles for losses per game. I think that's going to be an interesting aspect to see that BYU offensive line against a much smaller but very quick, very athletic uh, defensive front seven for Utah State. So there's elements to this, this game that Utah State can challenge BYU. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's going to be it's going to be a tough one for the Aggies for sure. Now, I'm being told that Declo is not in the middle of nowhere. It's eight miles east of Burley. It has its own exit on the freeway. That's from a native Idahoan who is challenging your claim of Declo being in the <laughs> middle of nowhere. Your thoughts? Okay. Uh, a Google population, Declo, Idaho. It's 298. <laughs> I had a graduating high school class of 65. Um, and so, you know, yes, it is a technical suburb of Burley, which is, by the way, population 10,000. And look, nobody's going to stand up for the good reputation of Declo, Idaho more than this guy. But still, geographically, it's not really <laughs> centered in the, uh, you know, in a bustling metropolis, if you will. It has its own exit on the freeway. I, that's all I need to know. Okay. Hey, that's Scott. Pretty good. Okay, fair I, enough. I imagine that the pride of Declo, Idaho, is not too happy with the idea of BYU football and basketball on the men's side going away for the foreseeable future. Uh, what What are your thoughts on BYU and Utah State not playing football until who knows when, and the basketball game not happening in the future? Well, okay, football is one thing, and I totally get football, especially if you're playing a nine-game uh, conference schedule in the Big 12. That makes sense to me. Um, although, if you know, if BYU is playing in Laramie in 2024, that doesn't make a lot of sense. But whatever, I, yeah. I, I agree with you guys. I think eventually that thing will get worked out. Um, I So football makes sense. I get that. Basketball, I still think you should, you know, there, there can be ways in which you can play that game. But I also understand that Tom Homo's in an interesting bind. Uh, look, you're, it's a new world. You're not exactly sure what you're, uh, what you're working with there. I understand that it's, it's, you're, you're navigating some waters you're not completely familiar with. I would hope when the dust settles, especially on the basketball side, and BYU kind of settles into the rhythm of the Big 12 and knows what to do and how to schedule and things like that, that we can see Utah State back on the schedule. Look, it's me. For me, selfishly, 
not only is the play-by-play guy for Utah State, but also mm-hmm. a radio show host in Salt Lake City. Rivalries are fun. Rivalries make great topic, great content. It's fun to talk about BYU and Utah, and BYU and Utah State, and Utah and BYU. Those are fun conversation points. It makes our job easier. So, yeah, I'm being a little selfish. I would like these games to be played if possible. But I'm also a realist, and I understand that BYU's got to find a way to work through a new world they're living in in the Big 12. Scott, you are a class act. We appreciate the time, as always. Uh, safe travels down to Provo for the game tomorrow night. And hopefully our fans in Decla are watching to see you uh, con- your budding career continue on BYU Sports Nation. Budding- I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a try-hard guy. You know I'm scrappy. So hopefully – Good things continue to come my way. So thanks, guys. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Scott Gerard, voice of the Utah State Aggies. <laughs> I love him. He's so personable and fantastic. He's the best.